Hi again, guys. Um, I'm going to continue with this problem 253. This will be uh, the analytical or the mathematical way of doing it. Uh, please look at the previous video, which was the graphical method, which I uh, I think initially I prefer that kind of method because it, it it's not just doing maths uh, without any understanding, but it's actually doing using vector um, addition. So remember that you know, of course, we need the maths as we go on, and um, to do it mathematically is, is good and very impressive, but in my opinion, it's very helpful for us to understand how vectors are added together, force vectors. That's really the essence of chapter two, is adding force vectors to get a resultant, and seeing how if we modify one of those forces, how does it affect the other forces, okay? So please um, focus on the previous one, I would say, of course, you can do both methods. You can do the graphical or the analytical method. Uh, and, um, you know, they're both correct. But my preference initially is to understand graphically how you do these minimi minimization problems, okay? So um, let's try this here. Um, this is from the previous one, the previous problem, uh, the previous video, um, if you recall. What I basically got was, I got an F1. Okay, so you need to go back and look at the previous video, okay? Um, what I, there was my initial problem, 8 kilonewton, F, and 14 kilonewton, okay? And what I initially did was, I added these two up, and I got a resultant from just the 8 kilonewton and the four ki 14 kilonewton, and I got an 8,124 kilonewton at a specific angle. So the resultant of these two force vectors was this one. The reason I just did that is because it just simplifies my problem. Instead of having three, I now have two forces. So I got the resultant of these two equal to F1, okay? Which had that magnitude and it had a direction like that. And then there was my unknown F, okay? So this was my, in the previous video, I used this as my graphic to uh, find my to find the solution graphically okay then we had f1 using uh, vector addition we had f1 and we had f giving us fr which is based on this here the resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces resultant vector force vector is equal to the res is equal to the sum of the force vectors okay so that that's what we had there okay so this is also initially how I would go about to do the, the analytical one, is I would, um, I would get it into this form. I'm gonna sh maybe I'll show you two different methods, but this is using just the parallelogram method. I got that F1 and I got F, and now I finally have this, this triangle here. Remember that this angle was 59,5, that angle was 30,5, and that was 45, 45 degrees. So when you look at this triangle, right, which, I, which I've now obtained, what, what do you see here? What, well, what we see is we've got, um, we've, got, we've got F1 here, which we know. We've got F, which we know the angle of, but not the magnitude. And we've also got FR, right, which we don't know anything about, okay? Remember, this 59 is not, it's not between those two lines. It's, that's, this is the angle between that force vector and the horizontal axis, okay? All right, so based on this triangle, we can use the cosine rule, right? Let's just draw this again. Terrible drawing there. Okay. And we've got our FR. There's my FR. There's my F1. And that is my F, and that's my F1. Okay. So we know what this angle is here. This angle is equal to 75,5 degrees. Okay. Again, just please go and watch the previous video. Then this will make a lot more sense to you. Okay. But let me first do it this way, and then I'll, I'll do even a second analytical way. Okay, so what do we have here? 
If we want to know what is fr, we can use the cosine law or rule or whatever it's called. fr, the magnitude of fr squared, is equal to what? What does the cosine rule say? This squared is equal to f1 squared, the magnitude of f1 squared, plus the magnitude of f squared, right? Minus 2 times the magnitude of f1 times the magnitude of f times the cos of the angle between them, cos theta, whatever this is, theta equals 75,5, okay? All right, guys, does that make sense? So we're using the cosine rule. We've got a triangle here. We know what that angle is, and we, 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 yeah, we have our triangle, okay? So fr squared, let's just put in some numbers now, is equal to f1 squared, which is 8,124 squared plus f squared, we don't know what is f, minus 2 times 8,124 times f times cos 75,5, right? Okay, is that clear? So, so here's our equation. Let's, let's just simplify it. fr squared is equal to, say, 8, let's leave it like this, 8, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 4 squared plus f squared. Then let's simplify this here. 2 times 8, 1, 2, 4 times cos 75, 5 is minus 4,068f. Okay? That's what we got here. So this is our governing mathematical equation. fr squared is equal to 8,124 squared plus f squared minus 4,068f. So remember, guys, what are we trying to do in this problem? We are trying to minimize, we are trying to Find f, the value, the magnitude of f, so that fr will be a minimum. We are trying to find the value of f, f, right? The magnitude of f, so that the, so that the magnitude of fr will be a minimum, okay? So what do you recall from, uh, perhaps you've done it already in maths, in order for us to find a minimum, we have our equation here. We need to calculate the first derivative and set it equal to zero. So what is our first derivative? Our first derivative here would be, oh dear, the lights went out. Okay, but you can still see. The first derivative here would be 2fr, okay, df, r, df. Now, what does this mean? Uh, this, this over here, because we have the, we're, is this called um, implicit differentiation? Okay. So, because we've got the square here, we first need to multiply 2fr. Okay. Then we have, or is it the chain rule? It's the chain rule. Sorry, I'm not a maths teacher, but I know how to do it. Okay. Um, so, 2fr. Perhaps go ask your math teacher how this works. 2fr. Then we have dfr df. So we are seeing how does fr change with respect to f. Right? How, if, we, if we change f, how does fr change? If we change f, how does fr change? So dfr df. Then on the right hand side, remember we are, we are differentiating this with respect to f. So this is a constant, so that becomes zero. Again, this becomes 2f. That becomes 2f. Minus, right, 4.068. Okay? So if we differentiate this with respect to f, we get just the constant value. All right? So 
So what we, and then we need to set this equal to zero, right? Because we take the first derivative of fr with respect to f and we set it equal to zero. If you recall, if you have some kind of function, right? Where is the derivative uh, equal to zero? It's at these turning points, right? So here your d, your df, r, so to speak, d, df, will equal zero, right? If this is your function, f r, as a function of f then at the turning point we have a zero and what is the turning point the turning point is a maximum or we have a minimum here right that's also dfr df equal to zero so wherever we have a turning point we have a maximum or a minimum and what a turning point tells us is that the the gradient or the slope which is the first derivative is equal to zero all right so now we have this we have 2 times fr times dfr df equal to 2f minus 4,068. And this equals 0. So can you see this equals 0? This equals 0. So what we have here is 2f minus 4,068 equals 0. Okay, and if we rearrange, we get 2f equals 4,068 and f then equals 2,03 approximately, kilonewton, okay? And that is exactly what we got for the previous problem. F, the magnitude of F, is 2,03, okay? Let's just make this consistent, the magnitude of the force, okay? Then, all we need to do, now that we've got that, all we need to do is go plug it back into this equation. We plug this back into this equation and we should get the magnitude of FR 7,865 kilonewton. Okay? So that is the one way of, of doing it analytically. Um, please look at the previous video to see how I found F1 and then also F and how I constructed this triangle. Okay. A, s a second method, let's, let's, just, let's just do this, okay? I'm going to redraw this. A second analytical method. That's 8 kilonewton. I'm just going to draw this F down here. Just makes a bit more sense. That is 45 and we had our 14 going up like that. Okay? This is another method now. I mean, it's still really the same, but it's just a different way of looking at it. Okay? So, the one way of doing it is for us to first say, we take the right as positive and we say sum of the forces in the X equals the, the resultant force. The resultant force equals the sum of the forces in the X. Let us calculate what are the result, what's the resultant force in the x. We have 8 minus, this is uh, 30, minus 14 cos, and I'm leaving out the kilonewton here, right, because we, we're, just, we're working in kilonewton. I'll put it back later. 14 cos 30 minus f cos 45. So that is... Um, sorry, sum of the forces in the x is equal to the resultant force in the x. So, so the resultant force in the x is equal to 8 minus 14, comma, 8 minus 14 cos 30 is minus 4, comma, 1, 2, 4 kilonewton, right? Okay, you got that? Um, minus F cos 45. So that is my resultant force in the X. As you can see, it's my resultant force in the X is a function of F. We don't know what F is. Then, choosing up positive, say the sum of the forces in the Y is equal to the resultant force in the Y. And the resultant force in the Y 
is equal to 14 sine 30, because it's positive. And then there's no y component for this force. And then we, then we have a y component here, which is minus f sine 45. Okay? That is my... That is my resultant y component of these three forces. This is my resultant x component of these three forces, and that is my resultant y component of those three forces. Okay? So uh, let me just sorry, fix that. FRY is, this is 7. This answer here is 7. 14 sine 30 is 7. Okay? Minus F sine 45. Okay? That's my final, that's my actual final FRY, okay? So now, again, we can use this minimization thing. What we need to see is that FR, the resultant FR, is equal to what? FRx squared plus FRy squared square root, or we can say FR squared is equal to FRx squared plus FRy squared. Okay, are you happy with that? We have our x component and our y component. And the resultant force, remember, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find F so that the resultant of these three forces are a minimum. Okay? So here's our resultant force, and it's a function of FRx and FRy, and FRx and FRy are functions of F and F. Okay, so what is this going to give us? We have fr squared is equal to frx, which is minus 4, 1, 2, 4, minus f cos 45 squared plus fry squared, which is 7 minus f sine 45 squared. Okay, is that correct? Yes. 7 minus f 45 squared. Okay. So now this is, again, we've got a governing equation. Right? We've got fr as a function of f. Now again, we, we take the first derivative of our function and we set it equal to zero. Okay, because um, when the first derivative, when the slope of our function is zero, when the slope of our function is zero, we have a maximum or a minimum. Okay? Now, actually, maybe you haven't done this yet, but as you can see, we've got two turning points. One is a maximum, the other one is a minimum. In order for us to determine whether... It, the first derivative tells us whether it's a turning point. Okay? The, fir the first derivative be e being equal to zero tells us if it's a turning point. Okay? The second derivative tells us whether it's a maximum or a minimum. So I don't know if you've done that yet in class. But if the second derivative is a maximum, is, is positive. If the second derivative is positive, we have a minimum. If the second derivative is, is negative, we have a maximum. Okay. So, so let, us, let us take the first derivative. Again, it's... 2 fr dfr df equals, we've got that square there, so we have to say 2 times minus 4, 1, 2, 4 minus f cos 45. Okay, so <clears throat> is this, um, it is, I forget now, I just said it. But it's the type of differentiation we need to carry out. So the 2, we multiply the 2 out, but then we still need to differentiate what's inside the bracket, which is then, what is the coefficient of the variable f? It's minus cos 45, okay? Plus 2 times 7 minus f sine 45. Then we, we still need to differentiate the... Um, the coefficient, or we need to differentiate this f still, which then is minus sine 45. Okay. 
And then we need to set that equal to zero. There is our equation. We set that equal to zero. So this, we set that equal to zero. This is all equal to zero. Then, right, as you can see, we got, we got this equation. We can just divide by two because zero divided by two. We have a zero on the right hand side. So if we, if we multiply this out, we should end up with, I'm not even sure what we should end up with. And I don't want to keep your, keep, keep your time by trying to figure this out. But if you solve this equation again, you should get F equals 2.03 kilonewton and F magnitude and FR. You take that 2.3 and you plug it back into this equation and you should get FR with 7,865. Okay? Okay, guys, so I hope um, these two videos have helped. Please look at both the graphic and the analytical and compare and have a deep understanding. Okay, cheers.